right, welcome back to the channel. So we're gonna get back going on this. So let me catch y'all kind of update really fast. It is Thursday afternoon. We're here in North Carolina and we have, you know, the hurricane moving up the coast. Now we're not supposed to get hit with it really. I think it's gonna come in more South Carolina, Georgia. Um, but even if we did, it would be no big deal at all for us because us here on the coast, we're used to hurricanes. So first off, for all the new guys, if you comment on anything, <coughs> excuse me, on the video and you don't get a reply, it's because I can't respond to you. So I had um, somebody comment, I can't remember what it was. Um, I can't get to your comment. Um, so I promise you I'm not ignoring, I ignore literally nobody. And I try everything in my power to comment back to every single person. Sometimes I go out of my way to try to get to your comment and YouTube just blocks it for whatever reason. I can see the first couple of words and I see your username, but I can't actually see the whole comment or anything. Um, had somebody else comment on the last video we did on this that while I'm at it, I need to go ahead. All I can see is while you're at it, go ahead and remove that crank snout snapper, I think so. They're talking about the Pro Charger. I don't know if the rest of the comment, you know, was saying Pro Charger's junk, get rid of it, put a turbo, nitrous, whatever on it. I don't know. I don't care, honestly. Um, so I, I just wanted to comment back and be like, dude, I greatly appreciate that comment. I never even thought about removing that thing. I'm terribly sorry. I'm going to take it off. We'll throw all of that money in the trash can and you let me know what I need to put on this even though I'm not. So if you're new to the channel, we went with a Coyote, not an LS, because I can't stand to be like everybody else. I don't care if it's cheaper um, to go fast, you know, with. Don't care if the LS is faster than a Coyote. Could care less. I did not, I'm not in this to drag race. I think a lot of people get that confused and forget. I did not build this car um, because I wanted to go drag racing. I built this car because I love building cars. I started the YouTube channel because I love helping people and I want to show y'all how you can do simple things. Um, so the car was not a um, build something that's faster than everybody out there. And, um, you know, for the best bang for the buck, that's not what this build was about. So that's the reason why we're in no hurry to get this thing to the track. Now, we're going to try to stay at it and not let it go stale. But y'all, if you have OG to the channel, you know now that I'm, not, I'm never in a hurry to get this thing back to the track. This is where we're at for now. This is what we're doing. We're not trying to be the fastest out there. We're not building this car to go to fastest. We're building this car to have fun, enjoy the build, uh, use our hands, create something that's beautiful, and hopefully create something that we can grow and learn into and help other people along the way on how to make your car look good. Uh, and you're probably the fastest out there. So now you could be the fastest plus have a good looking car. Me, I'm not trying to be that. So that's the reason why we have Coyote. That's why we have a Pro Charger is at the time that I did that stuff was to be different and to be totally opposite of what everybody else does. So if everybody started to go Coyote tomorrow, I'd probably be um, within the next handful of months extremely, how do you say it? Encouraged to sell it and get rid of it and go with something else probably. <laughs> so. so what we're gonna do is before I get carried too far away, um, carried away too far, is we're going to look at this old filter housing because I'm thinking about moving it. But then again, I might leave it the same. So we'll put a little bit of thought into the old filter housing real fast this afternoon before we get too far broke down. And like I said, I'm, we might be changing up the water pump. The water pump issue is that aftermarket BMW water pump is like $160, $180 for an eBay unit. It's gonna be even more at your local parts store. If I do go that route, then I will show y'all part numbers and everything, obviously. Um, I've had two people offer to uh, give me pumps, donate pumps that are like already have for spares. Um, we are probably going to do that. I'm probably gonna take y'all up on them offers and uh, just put some spare ones in to get me started. But I'm still extremely leaning towards going to the BMW water pump. So if we switch to the BMW water pump, we will be switching back to our MMR water pump delete plate. Um, so that we can go back to 20, remember where it's at. Um, so we can, right here. So this is our MMR water pump delete plate so that we can go back dash 20 in the front of the motor. So basically instead of down here, how in the previous, in one of our previous videos, we took a factory Coyote water pump and went with dual, um, I think remember dash 12 ANs. Uh, we'd go back with the water pump delete and just do one big, um, dash 20. The reason why we didn't put a dash 20 in that is because the water pump we're using 
is obviously single in, dual out. So I had to have duals right there to make that water pump work. Um, I would love though to switch back to a Dash 20 for simpleness. Uh, if we did do the BMW water pump, it'd probably be over here. It'd probably be frame rail mounted. I'd probably go ahead and weld a plate on here and maybe touch this up with airbrush or something. Not really sure yet. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna check out the oil pump or oil house and filter filter housing this afternoon. And another thing we're gonna be doing while this motor's is out is we are gonna come in here and cut a little bit more weight out and simple simplify it. So we have this factory metal right here. Um, we're gonna get this out. So we have this little bit of metal left. I went with this at the time because I thought that I needed the structure there. And then I later realized for the frame rails, and then I later realized that you pretty much do not. So we'll probably get this out. We'll probably still brace to the frame rail somehow maybe off of this bar or probably just leave the bar that we already have there because we do have this bar right here actually that one don't go all the way down so we can't do that but we'll be replacing some kind of bar in there just as a little bit extra brace down to that frame rail even though honestly it's probably not needed at all um but yeah we're gonna get rid of this little bit extra right there that way it's just a little easier to get back there to that last primary and you don't have this bit of metal in the way and hopefully it will clean everything up a little bit more so now that i've kind of put everything in mock-up once and well not mock-up we literally did a dyno pull um now that everything has ran once i kind of know what's irritating me and what's not uh this whole travel um limiter setup is kind of irritating so we're going to go ahead and fix that while all that's apart we're going to fix the shock sensors because they did uh break i don't know if we ever even went over this in the video but the um the little bolt snapped off of the hind so the shock sensor themselves they did not break so they're perfectly fine but the little hind that's on the end of them i had it on a bolt like this it's just that's just too binded up man like that's just it's just not going to work so we're going to spend our time while tkm is doing the motor and we're going to focus on the back areas right there and the uh, suspension area we're going to focus on cleaning that up and getting all that cut out we have to retain the some of this metal up here but i can definitely get rid of more of it than i had originally did we've got to keep some of this though to keep the factory hinges so we want to we want to keep that and then we'll probably take metal you know and come down there or something to stiffen that up or even bring that back to here or something i'm not sure we'll figure that out when we get there when the motor's out of our way um also we are going to attempt to unbolt the oil pan so i'm going to go ahead down there maybe tonight it might be a good thing to do tonight and drain the oil out of it and try to pull the oil pan out of it with the motor in the vehicle what that's going to do is tell me if we can get this oil pan out of the vehicle if we need to and if we cannot get it out then we will be um, making sure that we can get it out on the next one. I'm probably gonna cut some more of this out down here. So we have uh, the old steering rack plate right here. And then we have this extra meat that's right here that I was kind of thinking I needed. The bar stops right there. I've cut the center out of it, but um, I still have some meat in there. So I think we're going to, even over here, we're gonna cut a little bit more weight out. Like you're probably talking, you know, less than 10 pounds, but we're gonna try to take another like 10 pounds out of this front end. Um, you know, like I said, maybe less. Who cares if it's one pound? So let's just go with that. We're going to take one pound out of the front end because somebody's going to comment it's not worth it. It's what I want to do. Um, yeah. Besides that, I don't think we need to really do too many more improvements. You know, like I said, I'm just trying to make sure that when this thing goes back together, it's exactly closer to how I want this time. We will be addressing the throttle cable when it goes back together. And I'm thinking changing up the fuel lines because I have been extremely unhappy with the uh, the fuel lines, how they went, went together. But we will figure that out as we, as we go. So let's get at it. And then uh, let's figure out if, what, if we want to do anything with this um, old filter housing or if we want to change it up. So this is a better shot of it. You can see the mess that this thing has went through um, for everybody. You know, we've been talking about this. This was the point of failure. So this is, uh, you know, one of our areas. You can see how tight it is on the steering rack down there. So they're not rubbing, which all of these are not really zip tied like they were before. I just kind of, since I knew the steering wasn't turning, we just kind of made it work. Um, but I'm just not super happy with how 
these things are very hard to get to. So that's what I'm thinking about moving them. And then how hardcore these lines have to be bent right here. I think what I'm going to do next time is if I can get rid of this altogether, I'd like to come out more like here. And I'd like to come to like, you know, over here. I really kind of want to mount it over here on the inside of the rail or something. That way um, we have a little bit more easier lines to get in. Because I'm not sure if these were leaking from this or if it's just the extreme amount of bending that I have put them through right here and if they're actually leaking from there. So I'm not sure where the leak is coming from, but we're gonna definitely be replacing these. So I want to be able to get to them just a little bit easier this time. Also, if you have not entered into our fire suit giveaway, you need to go find that video. It's gonna be the card at the end of this video, fire suit giveaway, get yourself entered, watch the video, follow the instructions, make sure you do as we talk about in the video so that you're counted in the drawing and enter into your chance for free to get yourself a fire suit. So this is what we're gonna do with the filter is we are just gonna move it, I think, to over here, kind of like we had them mounts over there for the water pump. I'm probably gonna go ahead and weld me a plate to put this filter here. So instead of jamming these lines up like this, because that's the problem is that you can see how they run right there and you're just kind of jamming them um, really tight in here. They naturally lay out beautifully, you know, over to right here and then have a lot cleaner, less stressful sweep. So we'll try to get two that are about the same length as these. I'll measure these. Uh, I, I don't trust these lines no more. I'm not going to trash these lines, but they're extremely hard to get in and out kind of. They're not, you know, they're, they're my worst nightmare if they leak and they were leaking the whole entire time. We couldn't get them to stop leaking. I've looked at all of the edges on these and all of them look you know good i just had them out and they're not damaged a little bit of paint chip right there but it's not somebody's probably gonna say something but i'll show it they're not dented or nothing you know we had that other one that was dented but both of these are you know perfectly round you can see inside the oil filter that's the oil filter down in there and then that would be the center of the oil filter. So uh, that's what we're going to do with that to make it a little more user friendly this time. I know I have room here because I used to have the water pump over here. So we'll just do some kind of plate here to mount that there. And that will keep our filter out here way easier. And it will also make our uh, sensor easier. Now we might, we're going to look into, if anybody knows where to put an oil pressure sensor on the block of the Coyote, please, please reach out to me or comment below and let me know. My email's in the description if you need to email me, but I am highly interested in this time moving the oil pressure sensor into the block. So if I don't figure out how to get it there, I'm probably going to have Kevin go ahead and uh, drill and tap it somehow. Uh, if that's a thing, I'm going to talk to him about that. I don't know a bit, a lick of clue about that. But um, that way we don't have this same issue again where we're reading false oil pressure. So I'm sure he can uh, add something somewhere. Hopefully that is easy to do or maybe even in the oil pan or something down there. I'm not, I'm not really 100% sure at all. But I think that's what we're going to do with that. So we're going to continue breaking it down uh, to get it out of the way. I think I'm going to move on the chest checking out the old pan. another thing that we are going to do is our coolant overflow tank so i haven't unhooked it but if you remember it was up here up front on our radiator we are going to go ahead and move that back to here inside the fender so it was up here in front of the front tire and the back tire obviously a lot of y'all didn't like that but um we're gonna just move it over here that way it's just one less thing out of the engine bay. I, I understand it's still in the line of the tires. I'm not really uh, moving it for that reason, but we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna run the overflow line through the car, I believe uh, this time instead of under the car, because I do already have holes right here that will be perfect to go inside the car, or I can even go in nice and clean right there. So I'll figure that out, but that's definitely not going to go back up front. That's going to go in there. And then you'll be able to just turn the wheel, lean up in here inside the fender and check to see if it's got anything in it. And then of course I will switch the lines over to the other side. So you can utilize this clear tube that's on the side to actually just physically check with a light to see if there's anything in there between passes. But we're definitely going to get that off the nose uh, just to simplify things a little bit.
All right, so just laying under here, I can already tell you this answer of our oil pan situation. So due to them bolts up there that you, let's see, right there, that you have to get coming in from the side, the headers are in the way. So it's not gonna be the easiest thing to get because you can get your hands right here, but you can't really turn a wrench, as you can see. It'd be really, really hard. You know, once you break it loose, you could just about turn it with your fingers right there. Uh, the other side would be, a little tighter on that one. I can't even see it. But this big hunk of crap is right here. This 100 pounds of freaking metal. So we're not going to try to take it off because now that I think about it, it doesn't really matter if it will come off or not. Um, next time, if we ever get ourselves into a situation where we need to take it off, we will then find out, but I think it will be easier next time without this here and this here, this big square tubing. So you can see I can easily snake my hand around this section of tubing, but it's that block that's right there in the top of my wrist, you know, that just makes it a little harder. So if we got rid of this, you know, section right here and just went tube, it's going to make it a ton more easier to get up in there. And I also discussed with Mike about making this removable. So now that I'm looking at this, I might go ahead and make this removable. If we make this removable, then 1000% you can get the pan out with the motor in because you do have room to get your hands up in there. You would just have to, you know, get the bolts broke loose. And then that side, you can see how it runs down right there. Might be a little bit more tricky, but you could definitely do it. So uh, it's just gonna be a question of, do I just wanna make this a solid tube? Or like I said, make this removable. So that's just gonna be something I have to think about. But now that I'm rebuilding all of this from scratch, I'm honestly thinking um, about moving my steering rack up some to get it where it's not hanging down so low. Definitely think that I want to move this rack forward and up if I can do it. But we also have the steering shaft right there that we can't get in the into the headers, you know. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on that, but we can roll if we do go up some like this with the steering rack, we can, I think, hold, roll the steering rack and still shoot it straight. So now that I come out here and look at it, um, we actually, let me move this light out the way. We actually could benefit a lot, I think, off of moving this steering rack. So what you're looking at is that your tie rod is parallel with your control arm. So you can see the bottom of my control arm right there. Uh, I'm freaking about on the money. I mean, when I built this car originally at this ride height, if you remember, we did the video on two inch drop spindles versus uh, factory ride height spindles and why. Um, I mean, you can see at this ride height with the two inch drop spindles, how beautiful uh, my arms are, how they're parallel pretty much with the ground and the steering rack and everything's parallel. That's how I originally built the car before I jacked the geometry all up by going back to reg regular spindles because I was worried about no prep stuff because I was thinking about doing it. Blah, blah, blah. We talked about that in that video. If you want it, go find it. But we have all of this bump steer kit that we've ran way down um, to keep this steering rack parallel with that. Now your steering rack can be above or below, I'm pretty sure anything, as long as it's on the same angle as your lower control arm is what you want in the ideal world. So now that I'm out of the car and thinking about it, yes, if we move this forward and up, then we can actually shorten. I wouldn't have to extend. I could actually shorten my bump steer, move it up more, you know, and get these where they're not so low to the ground where they're scraping everything. And then all we'd have, you know, to worry about is the collectors and headers back there, which we can't do nothing about. We're fi we're financially tied to uh, that. If we wanted to get them up off the ground, we would have to go ahead and raise the motor up. And that means we have to do a ton of modifications to the trans tunnel. We gotta cut trans tunnel out, lift the trans tunnel and all that kind of nonsense, which I don't think we're gonna be doing right now. So I think we will, when we put this back together, we will be moving that steering rack up. All right, so I got the motor 
to the point of where it's ready to come out. Undo the motor plates in the front, uh, two upper transmission bolts, two lowers that are just in their finger tight, and then she should slip out. I'm not 100% sure. Never ever took this motor out with headers on it. So I only disconnected one primary, uh, which is kind of just hanging down in there uh, because you can't snake it out like it is right now. Um, but it looks like the headers may be the same width or smaller than the frame rails. So we're just going to try it. I need to know anyway if I need to take all the headers off before the motor has come out or if you can kind of wiggle it out or, you know, whatnot. So at home, we're relaxed. We got all weekend. This is the perfect time to do it. With that said, it is 1025 on Thursday night and I need to call it quits because Friday storm is supposed to be rolling in, but we're iffy if we're going to work. I still haven't called it yet. So I got to see what the weather's looking like, uh, 11 o'clock news, and um, see what the morning looks like. I would stay up, get this thing out tonight, but then I hate to, you know, have to go into work in the morning. So yeah, all the lines are unhooked. Everything's tucked back. Like I said, I want to make some changes to that stuff, but let's keep our fingers crossed that this thing will just snake right out with the headers because then it'd be pretty cool to be able to... Um, Put the headers back on outside of the vehicle you know because what we could do is since all the primaries are individual we could fully assemble them with the collectors outside of the vehicle let the gasket maker dry and then you know take the primary back off and uh put it in there without that or the collector take the collector back off and then put it back in there with that one primary um missing and do that one primary in the vehicle if we can get it out but i don't know if we can get it out yet so we're gonna call it wrap for this video Smash them notification buttons, man, so you can get notified because we're going to yank this thing out this weekend and start cutting this front end um, a little bit of weight out of it.